Mark Spector Comics, and I'm back. This time with my 2024 Con haul and my thoughts behind the show. If you're interested in seeing just some of the things I picked up and got signed, stay tuned for that intro. <laughs> Welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. So I'm going to be recapping my time at Terrificon from 2024. I went there on Saturday. Um, great time. The place was packed early on in the week. The tickets were sold out. Luckily, I bought mine on Monday. But um, my buddies were stressing out because... It was sold out on Ticketmaster, and then later on in the week, they opened it up again, and then they were able to buy their tickets. So I ended up carpooling with three other buddies. Uh, it was me, John Ross, and Dave, the Poon Tank Slayer. So was, sorry, <laughs> three of us total. And, um, and then I ended up meeting up with my sister and my other buddy, John, So uh, and saw them at the show. Also met up with Will and Sean. So uh, it was a great time, and Tony, Old Wolf. Um, but we'll get more into that afterwards. The place was crazy. We got there right around 11 o'clock, quarter of 11, and uh, parking was already absolutely insane. Uh, we parked, luckily we found a spot in the outside parking lot. But there was already a line well outside the casino, out to the outside parking lot. Never seen that before. I've been there for some my fourth, I want to say my fourth time there. Um, I've been to Saturday show one other time, and this blew it out the water. Um, the place, from what I was told from other people inside, it was capped at 40,000 people there, which it was, like I said, it was packed in there. Uh, but it was definitely some, you know, you had some elbow room in there. You were able to walk around and have a good time. Uh, I was looking primarily to go see the creators. and um, it, Definitely wasn't, it didn't feel like there was 40,000 people, if, if that makes sense. But um, I was in line to meet some creators, and the lines were crazy packed, with the exception of uh, Chris Claremont, um, Jim Lee, and Scotty Young. Those were the essentially the three exceptions. Everything else, you could just walk right up to the uh, creators and just, you know, talk to them and get books signed and so forth. So um, I'm going to talk to you about the books I got signed. Um, and my purchases, and then we'll just give it a quick little recap. So um, I came with the intention of getting about, I brought like two store folios with me, maybe like 14, 15 books with the intention of trying to get as many books aside as possible, not knowing how packed it was gonna be there. So I'm gonna show you what I got signed, and then I'll show you the repurchases I bought. So in no particular order, uh, if you've seen the preview, you'll have an idea of what you know, creators and so forth were there. Um, I got this book signed by Scotty Young. He signed it there at the bottom. And uh, this was actually my son's copy. This is twig number five. As you can see, it's well read. And uh, when I was talking to Scotty, he uh, actually appreciated that, you know, to see, you know, some young, young fans out there reading his stuff and just appreciating it, you know? So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm just pulling out books at random. You know, uh, I had two books. These were my two only books I did not get signed. Um, my Deadpool uh, homage covers from um, Art of Sudam. Did not get that signed by him because uh, it was kind of strange. I went up to his booth and I talked to a few buddies there in line. And they were saying they wanted me to, not me, just anybody in general, um, purchase a book from his booth in order to get a signature. So I was like, well. I'm not really about that. You know, I brought books to get signed by you. Um, I didn't want to get a different book signed, you know, so I was like, well, I just, I'm not going to, you know, pay what you're asking. So I was like, all right, and I didn't get that signed. So that was the quick story on Arthur Sudan. I also got my copy of Twig Number One signed by Scotty Young. Love this cover. This was done by uh, Kyle Stram. And I talked to Scotty briefly. Um, while I was in line, and he did say that the next series is already written for Twig. So if you guys enjoyed the series like I did and my son did, it will be coming back at some point in 2025. So that's exciting news. 
Uh, if you read the last issue in Twig number five, it says Twig will return. We didn't know when it was going to happen, so it uh, sheds a little light on that. Um, let's see what else I got in here. I also met up with Al Milgram. Uh, some of us in the community like to throw a little joke out there, what we call him Uncle Al. Um, so I got two books signed by Uncle Al. This book was quite unique. A um, couple of guys here uh, locally to me have a funny story about this book. When I did a comic crawl at John's house, he had like half a short box of this book in there. And this is like a Captain America promo book featuring the asthma monster. And um, Al Meldrum actually did the cover. Um, yep, it says right there. See how there, A.M. Al Milgram. Um, so he was there. I got this signed by him. And when I showed him this book, it was like, oh, have you ever gotten this book signed before? I was like, yeah. I was like, one other time. And it was like, was it today? I was like, yeah. Because <laughs> my buddy Tony also brought this book with him. And he was like, I don't remember ever making doing this cover. And he was like flipping through the book and looking at it. I was like, oh, this is really neat. So I got that signed by him. Also got this West Coast Avengers uh, issue number 21 signed by uh, Al Milgram, just a cool Moon Knight cover and featuring uh, Hank Pym as well. So that was pretty cool, I thought at least. And then, uh, like I said, I was uh, meeting some other creators there. Um, also got a chance to meet Michael Golden and I got this uh, Micronauts issue number one sign. I didn't realize that uh, Al Milgram also did this cover. I could have gotten this signed by him, but I didn't. Uh, so that was on, that was on me. But he signed it there in the corner. It was such a tiny little signature. And I was like, oh, damn, he charged 30 bucks for that. So I was like, I'm not complaining, but I was just like, he could have signed it a little bit bigger. So it was, uh, it was a, just a little different. Um, and uh, when I was in the Chris Claremont line, I brought one book. I was going to bring two books. The other book was uh, X-Men, I'd say 120. I think that's the uh, cameo of uh, Alpha Flight. I was going to bring that book as well, but I only decided to bring one book because, like I said, I was kind of on a pension how many books I was going to bring. So I'd rather get this book signed because um, this is my favorite uh, X Men character. And uh, this is X Men issue number 266. And uh, so um, obviously, this is Gambit. If you're not familiar with this book, I'm pretty sure you guys are. But I got this signed by Chris Claremont. Um, another nice guy. Uh, he'll tell you he has lots of great stories. We just like talk, talk, talk. Super nice guy. And but uh, this was towards the end of the night, so uh, the line had already been cut off for the for the evening. I was luckily in that line before we uh, before they called us, so I was thankful I got that signed by him. So I'll put those away, and then I'll uh, show you my second stash. This one has. As many, as many books left in that stash. But um, got a few more books in here, and then I'll uh, talk about the uh, purchase purchases. So uh, next book, I got a chance to uh, meet Mark Wade, and uh, I brought one book to get signed by him. And you know, when I was in his line, he was actually said, uh, first book is free, second book is five dollars." So that was pretty neat. Got this uh, X Men Alpha, so the classic '90s cover, super shiny, little chromium cover, and he signed it right there. So that was neat. Um, David Mack was also at the show, so I got this really classic Daredevil issue number nine. That was a okay to me a few years back by Rayman, so I got that signed by David Mack. He has a big signature too, right there. So. Um, and he had a bunch of his uh, artwork there for sale. Quite pricey, but it was beautiful. I love the watercolor. And um, and then the last two books I got signed was by Terry Cavanaugh. He's a pretty notable writer for the Mark Spector Moonlight run. So I got these two classic covers in the run. Done by one of my favorite artists in Moonlight. And this is Stephen Platt. This is uh, Mark Spector Moonlight issue number 55. So he signed that. And then my, probably my favorite cover in the entire run is uh, Mark Spector Moon Knight issue number 57. There you go. They signed that alongside the moon. So that was cool. So those are my signatures 
for the convention. Like I said, there was many, many more uh, creators there. I did not get a chance to meet. I didn't bring any books for them. Like Jim Lee, Jim Starlin, and Walt Simonson, and the list goes on and on. So lots and lots of great creators at the show. Uh, Mitch is the uh, person who coordinates the entire show. He, he gets all these creators that come in year after year. And they try not to do repetitive creators just to change it up. Um, so that was pretty cool to meet these guys. Celebrity-wise, there were some great celebrities. Keanu Reeves was there briefly for two hours on Friday uh, with Ron Garney to get some signatures. Um, Martin Cove was there. It was like so many, so many great, great people there. And I met up with Los, and I saw Los and his brother there. He ended up AOKing me this uh, poster. So that was pretty cool. A nice little Iron Man Tales of Suspense poster. So that was really cool. So thanks, buddy. And um, my three purchases for the show. I'm going to show these real quick. Um, I don't have as much information as I would like, so apologies ahead of time. Um, I'm going to have to do some more research after the fact. But um, I ended up buying three pieces of original artwork. Um, the first one was from my buddy Buzz Comics. I bought from him in the past. Actually, I forgot about this one. Um, I also met Justin No Good Comics, his dad, Greg Lark, who's there. And a bunch of us were at his booth, and he signed a bunch of these prints. So he, um, he had a Moon Knight print there for me, and he signed that. So that was really cool. I almost forgot about that one. So um, I bought three pieces of original artwork. I don't usually buy a lot of original artwork. This is probably all in all, I want to say my sixth or seventh piece of original artwork. So um, um, I bought three pieces at the show. So that tells you <laughs> half of it is from the one show. So my buddy Buzz Comics had a little bit of original artwork there. And like I said, I bought from him in the past. Super, super nice guy. And my buddy John told me he had some Sonic related original artwork. And he thought of me right off the bat as somebody who may like it. He had originally four pieces for the show. So I bought these two pieces. I'll talk about this one first. So uh, this is um, not Sonic the Hedgehog per se, but a bunch of his buddies from the. Uh, from the Archie title. So you can see there's Knuckles there. But first, let me tell you about the story. So this is called Great Chaos. Uh, Great Chaos Caper? I'm not sure. Um, it could be the name of the title. I'm not sure of the story. But um, this is page number 15. And this is why I say apologies ahead of time. I'm going to have to do some more research to get all of the specifics about the original art. Um, because I bought it from the dealer, and my buddy John had already bought it from him. So I didn't get all of the details. But this was done by the penciler, Tracy Yeli. Yeli, uh, that's pronouncing it correctly, but um, it's featuring a lot of his buddies there. There's Knuckles, that's a great Knuckles piece right there. Um, Vector, Vector's the crocodile. And um, there's Knuckles again. There's Vespio. Vespio's the rhino. And then there's his buddy here, the bee, which I don't know his name offhand. My son will instantly know his name. So <laughs> apologies to the uh, to the Sonic the Hedgehog fans out there. Um, but this is just a beautiful art, uh, art page. It's a lot of uh, different panels going on there on the, on the actual page. So this was pretty neat. And then the second page from uh, Buzz Comics that I bought, this is um, called Tango Part 2, issue number, it's like either 21 or 22, page number 11. Also done by Tracy Yarmol. Yarmol. But this one has um, action and words. So it has both of them in there. And um, so it has a few different characters in here that were not in the other page. Um, it looks like you got... Shoot. Let's see if that has any of their names. Oh, Cream. You got Cream on there. Um, you also have Cheese. So Cheese and Cream are all... <laughs> it's just, it sounds stupid when I'm saying it, but Cheese and Cream are on there. Um, they're often put you know, together in the, uh, in the comic series. Um, 
definitely got some words going on in here as well. And um, just a fun, fun little action scene here at the top, the top panel. So uh, I ended up buying these two total for, um, for 200 bucks. So I thought that was a fantastic price. You know, people often think or they shy away from uh, original artwork because it's often, they instantly think you see like a Jim Lee picture, it's gonna be like $100,000 or you know, Tom McFarlane page or Jack Kirby, whatever. You know, but there's tons and tons and tons of original artwork that are extremely affordable, you know. So I bought that for a hundred bucks a page. That's crazy, crazy. You can buy like your random key on the wall for a hundred bucks, or you can buy this original, you know, page of artwork. Um, so it just it baffles me when I, I just was able to get something like that at a comic shop. Um the second one I bought. The second, uh, the third piece of artwork I bought was as I was leaving the show, I went to go see my buddy, um, John. He told me that his uh, his friend, Bob Stevenson, had a ton of artwork. So I was going to go there to go uh, check out to see what he had left from the show. And uh, I was just scrolling through. My sister was going through the, you know, different pieces. She saw uh, two pieces of SpongeBob SquarePants original artwork that she ended up buying. So that was pretty cool um, featuring Patrick. And uh, I saw this really neat. Oh, if you know me, if you watch my channel, I like buying Christmas related stuff. And um, I saw this original artwork featuring uh, Betty and Veronica. And this is a Christmas pinup. So you can see Betty and Veronica there. It says Merry Christmas. And this was from, it looks like Jetta Christmas pinup, date December 14th. 2019. So this is recent. Um, and it looks like it was done by three people. So Jeff Schultz, Jim Tornis, and Eddie Chapman. Um, so I believe, if not mistaken, uh, the anchor, Jim Torres, he did this. And I actually, if you saw my Instagram post, I took a picture with uh, Jim Tornis right at the end of the show, right after I purchased, or right as I was purchasing this. Um, he just happened to be there, and um, and he saw this, and I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. You know, you, you know we talked a little bit about the series and stuff like that, so uh, it's always pretty neat when you can tie it in together and you actually meet the creator that was there that did it. So that was a nice little added touch, and uh, this was, I believe, 250 I paid for that, so that was pretty neat. And uh, it's also signed there as well, yeah, Jim Tornis. So uh, that was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, that was it. That was my uh, show at Terrific Con. I had an absolute blast. Um, out of the four or five times I went there, this was by far blew it out the door. I met a ton of great creators, um, did some, you know, definitely some good hunting out there. Didn't buy any comic books. I uh, wasn't looking for anything specific. So it kind of made it a little easier for me to just walk around and have a good time. And then I hung out and uh, met some uh, new new comic book uh, community members, um, you know, talked to them for a little bit and uh, just had a blast. So uh, if you ever get a chance, come by Terrific Con. It's a great show. I can't recommend it enough. Very comic book creator centric um, versus some of the other shows locally to me. Definitely this one blows it out the doors. Uh, but yeah, that's it. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. If, if you guys went to the show, let me know what you guys thought. And uh, until next time, I expect the comics.